How's it going guys? It is 2.50 a.m. 15th of April here in Japan. Past level question for Neuro for step one in Chalm Medicine 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, element underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 42-year-old woman brought to the ED by her husband after collapsing in the kitchen during dinner. We have a CT of the head here. And question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. So it's a past level image slash non-contrast CT for subarachnoid hemorrhage. You see how it looks like a starfish. Okay, you see the white part of this image here, the radio opaque, more radio opaque area. It looks like a starfish, a sand dollar, right? That's very buzzy for subarachnoid hemorrhage. So you need to know this image for USMLE. Obviously, we could do a long discussion. I mean, epidural, your biconvex lens, subdural, crescent-shaped. So you need to know those bleed images for USMLE. And this one looks like SAH, looks like a sand dollar, starfish. So what's most likely to be seen? Let's just hop to the answer choices. Past level, as I said. Choice A, alcoholism, wrong fucking answer. This could be associated with subdural hematoma. Okay, so uh, alcoholism, elderly with decreased cerebral mass, dementia, uh, deceleration injuries, such as car accidents, uh, shaken baby syndrome. Okay, so that's classically subdural, crescent-shaped, as I said, and tends to be, it's going to be rupture of bridging veins, superior cerebral veins, more slowly accumulating. The neuroforms for 2CK uh, clinical master series can give you a patient in the 80s who just has few week history of wobbly gait. That's all they tell you. And the answer is subdural hematoma. They don't mention any injury or anything like that. And you say, well, how are we supposed to know? It's a good fucking question. All right. You'll eliminate to get there where the other ones just aren't likely. And you're left with, well, elderly patients, decreased cerebral mass, increased risk of subdural. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, loose interval, wrong fucking answer. First to epidural hematoma, rupture of middle meningeal artery. So the middle meningeal and the superficial uh, temporal artery come off the external carotid, okay? And classically, patient will hit his or her head in the temporal area, have uh, an interval where he or she is unconscious, five to 10 minutes, wakes up, and says, no, I don't need to go to hospital, I'm fine. And then they go home and they go to sleep and they die, okay? So that's epidural hematoma, biconvex lens. You're gonna do intubation hyperventilation if it's listed for increased intracerebral uh, pressure on USMLE, and then craniotomy, okay? For subdural, you're also gonna do craniotomy. If they give you a vignette of subdural only, not epidural, subdural only, where the patient is asymptomatic you can, and it's a small bleed, you can sometimes observe. But for epidural, you're going to do intubation hyperventilation to decrease intracranial pressure followed by craniotomy. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, madriasis, unilateral, correct answer. Now this might seem like an obscure answer choice. I said this is past level. So maybe I should upgrade it a little bit, okay? Medium difficulty in that an ipsilateral blown pupil, madriasis is, is a blown pupil, large pupil, four millimeters or greater, okay, for USMLA. Meiosis, small pupil, one to two millimeters. So an ipsilateral blown pupil is exceedingly high yield for a PCOM aneurysm, ruptured or not, doesn't matter. So subarachnoid hemorrhage is going to be anterior or posterior communicating artery aneurysm that ruptures, berry slash saccular aneurysm, hypertension, most common cause, adult polycystic kidney disease and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome obviously can cause saccular slash berry aneurysms, but they're not the most common cause, okay? So hypertension overall in the population more likely to cause subarachnoid hemorrhage. And ipsilateral blown pupil for PCOM only, aneurysm only, exceedingly high yield for 2CK neuro in particular. I know if you're hearing that for the first time watching this clip, you're like, really? That sounds like really like weird and nitpicky. I promise you it's not. And now that I've mentioned it, you'll actually see it in some questions now. Whereas before it was in the questions, you probably just wouldn't have noticed it. Okay. So this can be a giveaway in some cases. If they don't show you an image, 
They might mention a headache, but not the worst headache of one's life for subarachnoid hemorrhage. They can be tricky on TCK. And if you get an ipsilateral blown pu pupil, that's high yield for PCOM aneurysm, ruptured or not. So let's just real quick whip through the finalized choices. Choice D, pus planus, flat feet, wrong fucking answer, first to Marfan syndrome, where the risk of berry aneurysm is not increased appreciably. Okay, that's an erroneous notion that some students adhere to where they, they conflate Marfan syndrome with Ehlers-Danlos and uh, polycystic kidneys, but with Ehlers-Danlos, okay? So flat feet in Marfan syndrome, but not an appreciable increased risk of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Hypertension being most common cause overall of SAH, as I talked about. So finally, recessive polycystin mutation, wrong fucking answer. So polycystic kidney disease, when it's AR, AR PKD is pediatrics. It's not going to be an adult, okay? So they'll mention a kid in the first couple of years of life who has polycystic kidneys. They'll say that there's renal insufficiency. They can mention hepatic fibrosis, whereas AD PKD is going to be a patient 30s or 40s, high blood pressure. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content, like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.